these are very serious and concerning allegations. You asked me as a parent, yep. I, I would be extremely concerned about that. I mean, I think, in, in, in fairness, I don't know precisely what was said at what time, but certainly you would expect allegations of that nature to be dealt with very robustly and very promptly. And I think what we're now seeing today is I understand there's going to be a meeting with the police and that's absolutely right. And it may be, Kay, that in the fullness of time there will need to be investigation about how this allegation was handled. That's, that's quite possible. But right now, I think it's important in the interest of that victim, of that complainant, that this is dealt with as quickly and fairly and as robustly as possible. So, you know, let's, let's look in the fullness of time about what's happened thus far. But I think it's important to give them the space to get to the bottom of what happened, because these are very serious and very concerning sure allegations. Sure are. The presenter was only uh, suspended this weekend after yeah. the son broke the story, not when the complaint was first made in May of this year. Are you content that the BBC took the family's complaint seriously enough? Well, the only difficulty is I don't know precisely what was said. I've looked at the timeline and the suggestion that something was said initially in, the, in May and then something said subsequently. I don't know that. I mean, it may, I don't know precisely what was said. What I do know is that if these allegations were in substance made, then one would have expected very prompt action to be taken. As I said, I don't know precisely what was said. And I do think that in the fullness of time, this will need to be considered in the round. But right now, you know, these are you know, very okay, serious allegations me, and potentially the, you know, the police are may, involved and we'll have to see what, sure, what takes place. But, but I want them to get on with it. That's the key point. Yeah, I, I think it's, more, it's even more important to press this May issue because the mother mm. uh, says that payments to her child, the alleged victim, carried on after May because the BBC did nothing about it. Yeah. This child, the mother says, has a drug addiction, yeah. a crack cocaine habit. Payments were made and the child was in a position where they could buy more drugs as a result. This could have ended much, much worse, couldn't it? Well, it, absolutely. I suppose the only um, the only hesitation in my voice is not that I don't think that's incredibly seriously I, serious. I do. It's simply that, as I understand it, there's a slight dispute as to what the, the, the BBC saying what this individual. Says. I but simply if there was don't another know. Another payment. Of course, look, absolutely, Kay. I completely After agree. May, with you. I, look, I and totally, the mother says there's totally we've no agree. reason to doubt her at the moment. No, exactly. Or ever, she says there was another payment. After she contacted the BBC to say my my son's right. my child's life is in danger. And if that's I don't right, know if it's a boy or a girl, okay, that, life is in sorry. danger. Yeah. Please, please right. speak to your presenter. Okay. If that's right, then it's astonishing. Then it's astonishing, and uh, you would have expected robust action to have been taken much more quickly. The, as I said, the only day, I don't know precisely what was said, and that's why there needs to be a full discussion of this in the fullness of time. But if what you're saying is correct, then your point is is very sound one, and you would have expected extremely prompt action because these allegations are extremely serious. So uh, I, you know, I'm with you on that. Okay. Um, this is a public figure who works for a broadcaster paid for by the public. Is it in the public interest to know who the presenter is? Look, this is quite a difficult nuanced legal but... issue. So, no, well, no, that's right. I mean, I'm actually I'm not going to criticise him at this stage because it will depend on all sorts of things. So, for example, you know, if an allegation were made against you, uh, then and it was of an extremely serious nature, then I don't think it would necessarily be appropriate to name you immediately until there'd been a full investigation. And that's why, if I may say so, it's really important that time is of the essence, because there is a public interest in this, I accept. Equally, there is a public interest in ensuring that people aren't defamed as well. So it's a matter of fact and degree. Not every single immediate allegation would need to be uh, lead to that person being unmasked, so to speak, but there does need to be the process that is continued so that there is sufficient detail in that investigation to potentially just Justify that important step because you know once once this once the allegation is publicly made and that individual is unmasked, the consequences can be very serious. To say nothing of the potential legal knock-on totally implications. Get that. But what and about the important. other presenters who are being defamed as a result? Ah, well, that, that, that is why time is of the essence. That is precisely why time is of the essence. And if your earlier point is correct about the fact that an allegation was made back in May and that it was, in effect, sat on, that's why that is particularly serious, because this has knock-on implications, not just for the people at the centre of it, and let's remember, of course, first and foremost, the complainant, the victim in this case, but also for others who get uh, uh, caught up in it. But I'm not at this stage, without knowing all the facts, and that's why in the fullness of time we'll want to see the chronology, what I don't think it's, I don't think it's, for the I don't think it's, I don't think it's right. What do you account. want to ask him? If, you, well, if he was sat here today, what would you ask him? Well, what I would ask him at the moment is, what are you doing today to, to make progress on this? And what are you going to do to ensure that you give every possible support 
to the police and to uh, any subsequent inquiry if that's what should take place. So I want to focus on what's going to happen now in terms of support. What I also would want, by way of a commitment, is to complete transparency about how this was handled in the fullness of time. And, and that, I think, is important. But Act 1, Scene 1, if you like, is to ensure that what happens today is as prompt and as full and open and transparent. Yeah, exactly. It does extremely important work. I've just been to the G7 in Japan, and I can tell you, you know, the, the, the BBC is part of our soft power internationally, and it has got a reputation. So, so, but the thing about the BBC is it does stand apart, it does have a reputation, it is part of our soft power overseas, but that is undermined if it doesn't address these issues very promptly and fully and consistent with the standards that the British people would expect. And that's why, you know, this is a serious matter, most, first and foremost, for the complainant and indeed for the person at the centre of it, but also for the BBC. And as somebody who wants to see this BBC do well, I want them to respond to this well and professionally. OK. Talk to me um, about uh, rape prosecutions, which of yeah. course you want to talk to us about I do. Um, today. Um, that's, I understand what you're saying about, you know, you're, you're going to make sure that more people uh, are potentially prosecuting, mm. but the success rate is still very low. Well, can I just set a bit of context? So two years ago, we set a very ambitious and stretching target to recover the criminal justice system so far as rape is uh, concerned. And compared to the last quarter pre-COVID, so strip out the whole impact of COVID, the number of cases referred by the police to the CPS for a charging decision is up by 130%. The number of charges done, made by the CPS is up by 90%, and the number of cases received into the Crown Court is up by 160%. So very significant upward trajectory. Now, it's, the job is not done by any means, and we'll come on to some uh, further statistics, but it's worth reflecting that the number of people being prosecuted for rape is now higher than in 2010. And I think, From a low bar? No, no, higher than in 2010. So, I mean, that wasn't a particularly low bar, but of course we want to go higher. So that's why we're rolling out this national operating model for Operation Soteria, which is how the police and the CPS work together far more in a far more kind of collegiate and collaborative way. Also, by 2024, which is not a million miles away, we're going to have an additional 2,000 specially trained rape uh, investigators. And also every police officer being recruited into the police will have specific training in this. So, you know, I'm not suggesting job done, far from it. But the trajectory is really, really improving. And one, one final thing, those who are convicted are getting sentenced to, on average, 30% longer in jail uh, than in 2010. So, you know, important progress, job not completed by any means, but um, I, I think in the interest of balance, it's important to get the message out that people are being convicted, punished and disgraced for this appalling crime. OK, it's good to talk to you this morning. Uh, Justice Secretary, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Very much appreciated. Thanks.